Okay, as we are coming back from the weekend or break, you're gonna un or you know to your next class period, you're gonna carefully unwrap your coil pot. I would like to show you today how you can make your coil pot go in or out. Now, as you can see, I've been working on mine for quite a while now, and as you can see, it gently goes out and starts to come back in. Okay. My coil pot is currently, see here if I can measure it out for you, it is almost, it's right around three and a half inches tall, okay? Now, this is for seventh grade, so my coil pot needs to be four inches tall. So I'm almost there, okay? So let's refresh our memory. We got to make coils. We're making a coil pot. Yes, I know you cannot see my individual coils on my work here, but I did use the coil method, okay? So I'm gonna take some of my clay, because I added two pieces, I'm gonna squeeze really hard to make sure I don't have any air bubbles in there, okay? I'm gonna roll between my hands, turn it once, roll again, okay? I roll until the bottom really starts twisting too much in my hands, because that usually means that it creates a weak spot right at that particular part of the coil, and I don't want that, okay? So I'm going to lay it down. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to roll, and I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to put it on my table covering, okay? And I move my hand to one end, and then I move it back to the other. Now, I've rolled many, many coils, so I'm used to rolling a pretty decent length of coil in one shot with one hand and it's not really all that hard. If the one-handed process is too difficult for you, you're just not getting it to work. It just does not work, Miss Broquet. I cannot make it work. Well, then add in your second hand. Rolling with the palms of your hands. That's, you know, if you cut your fingers off and your thumb off, this is the palm of your hand. Rolling with the palm of your hands, Use both hands. Just make sure that you're applying the same amount of pressure with each hand and that you're not missing a section while you're rolling. Okay, so I've made a pretty decent length coil. Now, again, I've made lots of coils. It's not that hard for me to make a long enough coil. If it's hard for you, make two shorter coils and join them together on the pot. It makes no difference to me. It's going to work just fine. Okay, now I'm working on bringing my coil, coil pot in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my coil and instead of stacking it right on top, I'm going to slightly bring it to the inside. Not so much that it's actually on the physical inside of my pot in here just a second and I will show you what I'm talking about. Break off that coil. Okay. So, change my angle here. So, I'm not stacking it right on top to make it go straight up. That's what makes it go straight up, remember? I am bringing it slightly to the inside. Okay, you can see there's more of a gap right there. Slightly to the inside. I am not, okay, I am not, Okay, I am not going like this and putting it on the inside so it's level. That is not what I'm doing, okay? That's going to create like a ledge, and I don't want to do that. I want to slowly bring it towards the inside so it's going in. It makes a nice gentle curve in, but it doesn't make a giant step in, okay? So that's what I am working on. Bring this back up a little bit. Okay, so bringing them towards the middle. Now, it's a little long here. I'm going to leave it like that, okay? I'm just going to kind of set my coil off to the side like that, okay? When I'm working on bringing something in, sometimes it's hard to get my finger on the inside first. So what I will do is I will work in the opposite order that I tend to work in, which is going, doing the inside and then the outside, and I will do the outside first, okay? So I'm going to just bring my clay down, as you can see, all right? I'm actually moving parts of clay. I am not sitting there going like this 
and not doing anything or adding slip to my finger. Okay, adding slip to my finger and then going la, 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 la. Okay, and trying to fill that in and saying that, hey, that's going to stay. It's not going to stay. And if it does, it's just a temporary, temporary stay. I want it to stay for good. I want to join these two pieces of clay together so nobody knows that they were separate pieces. So that means that I actually have to reshape that coil and bring some of that coil down into the wall. That's what we're making here is the wall of the pot down into that wall of the pot. If I don't, then it's not really going to join very well. Okay? And I want it to stay. I don't want it to temporarily stay. I want it to stay for good. I want them to become one piece. Not one piece temporarily. Okay? So, I'm going to finish this up. Take off that little extra piece. Join the two ends of my coil. Okay, now the outside of my pot has a funky texture now. That's okay. I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna keep on going to the next step. What's your next step, Miss Broke? Well, my next step is to smooth the inside now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is this time I'm gonna use my thumb. When I find when it's coming in, it's a lot easier if I use my thumb sometimes, but I kind of go back and forth between my thumb and my one of my fingers. It really just kind of depends on whatever feels natural for whatever shape it happens to be in. Okay, so I'm gonna actually spin the pot around. That's when these banding wheels or these tabletop wheels, they're technically called a banding wheel. I usually refer to them as a tabletop wheel. Okay, or sometimes you guys call them spinny things. Okay, this is when this comes in handy. Because I can fairly, I can really easily just turn my, my pot around. And I don't have to pick it up. I don't have to worry about accidentally ripping it in a soft, in a thin area. Okay, or it getting stuck to the table. I can just twist it very easily, okay? These work, these banding wheels or tabletop wheels work really well for the coil pot method. Um, some kids try to use them for other methods and Sure, you can use them, but I have most success when I am using them with the coil method. Okay, so now I have my coil on the inside. I can't really see that very well. On the inside, you can kind of see. I went, by, went through and I smoothed the inside because I'm making it smaller. And so I wanted to smooth the inside first. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing I showed you in the last video. I'm going to move my finger in the opposite direction. I moved everything vertically. Now I'm going to move everything horizontally. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you do the inside or the outside first. Okay. all the way around smooth it out now some of you are always like you're not smoothing your coils and you go oh i'm just gonna wait until the end okay let me tell you something as this gets closer and closer to leather hard which it is moving that way every single day it becomes really really hard to get rid of this texture trust me i know i had to leave all that texture and this really huge coil pot i made in high school didn't quite turn out the way I wanted to because it had all these texture things. I tried to work with it, but I just, eh, it's not one of my favorite pieces, okay? And that's because I waited too long to try to go back and smooth this out. That is why I tell you, hey, you got to go and smooth it out. You got to do that, okay? Because I want you to learn from my mistakes. I'm not saying that you can't try and make your own and figure it out yourself, but that's one of the reasons why I now, after every single coil, now I know at the beginning I told you, hey, I wait until three coils high and then I smooth the outside, but it's more than three coils high now, okay? So that's just to provide enough space that first time 
to be able to hold on to it and actually do a better job of smoothing it than um, anything else. And I can usually do that in one period. So it's not like I'm sitting around letting it get leather hard yet. It's still in the wet clay stage at that point in time. Okay. Now it doesn't look perfect. It's still got some little areas to go, but it doesn't have quite as much of that texture. Okay. Now it's going in. I told you I was, so I want to continue making it go to the inside. Let's see. You guys keep asking me, how many coils do you need to make it four inches tall? And I keep telling you, I don't know. It kind of depends. Okay. I am now, okay, so I was at almost three and a half. Now I'm slightly above three and a half. Okay. So my coils all tend to be about the same even thickness. So I get about, I don't know, probably a fourth of an inch or so with each coil. So you got to make four of them. You guys do the math and figure out, figure it out. Okay. But that's because my coils tend to be kind of even. I had a chunky end of a coil, so I'm going to roll this out a little bit more. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing, making it go to the inside, putting it on the inside, this time slightly further because I want it to move in an inward fashion. Okay. I'm going to do the same process again, smooth the coils, and I will come back with another video and show you how to make the coils go out.